see that this individual piece. So let me see if I shoot this guy if I can get one. All right. There we go. Okay. So if we draw this guy, remember we have our envelope. And we have our carrier, which is at a much higher frequency. Okay. So that's the speed that each one of these little peaks moves at. Then we have our group velocity, which is the speed of the envelope. Okay, so you might be wondering when the heck are these ever going to be different? Well, let me see. For most of the ways we've been doing, we've had just single velocity waves where we've written down the nice equation that V equals omega over K. This is for Okay, so we can write then omega equals V times K. So that in that case, we would have V phase equals omega over K, which equals just V, no big surprise. And we would have V group. Well, if we take the derivative V omega DK, what do we get? V. Not very exciting. That happens to be the same as the phase velocity. So this is the first thing we showed, where the carrier within the packet, it just moved and nothing really exciting happened. But remember in recitation yesterday, you had an example where you were finding uh, the speed of, of waves with small wavelength through the surface tension, you did some dimensional analysis. Yesterday too long ago? Okay. So remember, so if we had the surface, this is an example. There are many. So the surface waves from recitation yesterday, I believe we found that the speed of the wave went at some constant times the wave number to the one half. Does that seem right? Maybe? No? No? Is that not what you got? From recitation yesterday? So remember you guys did mental analysis and you're finding the powers of K and rho and all sorts of things? I believe you got that the speed of wave went as the square root of the wave number. Okay. So the speed of a wave of the carrier is still omega over k equals c and some constant. That's just all the other stuff that had to do with the density and the surface tension and stuff. I'm just lumping all that into this constant c because we don't care about it for this problem. So if I solve this for omega, I get omega <coughs> equals c times k to the, oops, k to the what? Three halves, thank you. All right. There we go. Okay, so now, what's the phase velocity for this kind of wave? Omega over k, which is ck to the one half. The group velocity, however, is d omega dk. What's the derivative of omega with respect to k? We have C k to the one half. Oh, C k to the one half. That is our phase velocity. So this is three has V phase. So here, in the one we did yesterday, you can see an example of that the envelope is moving at a different speed than, um, than the carrier wave itself. 
So what does that look like? Okay, so to give you a good visual of what it looks like, I want to introduce you to um, this beat. So if you take a whole bunch of different frequencies and you add them together, you can arrange it such that there's only constructive interference over a short over a short way and deconstructive interference over the rest of it. So here's a beat, and this is in what's called a non-dispersive medium. A non-dispersive medium are the kind where the speed of the waves does not depend on the frequency. Okay? That everything's gonna travel at the same speed. Now, what happens if we put the same wave packet into a medium where Depending on what frequency you are, you travel at a different speed. Let's see. Whoa. So what do you guys see going on right now? It's rippling. What else is it doing? It's expanding. Because look at the For this particular medium, whatever it is, it looks like the longer wavelengths are traveling faster than the shorter wavelengths. And so not only is it rippling, the actual shape of the wave packet is spreading out. So many media are dispersive. Uh, let's think a little bit about sound and air. What would happen to music if sound was dispersive in air? Oh, God. <laughs> so that would mean that if you played a certain note, it would travel at a different speed and get to the listener than somebody who played a, it's like you played a high note from a different speed than a low note. and. Heaven forbid, you're going to see when we look at instruments, they don't emit just on the frequency when you play a certain note, right? So you're going to get something that does not sound very good at all. Yeah, question. What's an example of a medium that would be dispersive, like where, where we would see that happening? Okay. Um, well, dispersive, so if you think about, say, light waves <coughs> traveling through something like a prism, the whole reason that we get if you put light waves to a prism, you get a rainbow coming out. It's because the different frequencies travel at different speeds as they bend in different ways, and so it actually separates that. So that'd be an example. Yeah. So are there no examples for sound? Is that not um, what happens ever? Maybe I have any good examples for sound? Yeah, no. ultrasound. Um, so high frequency sounds will, will do the same thing. Thank you.